This is the Bio Twang. A mysterious underwater sound first recorded in 2014 near the Mariana Trench. It begins with a deep grumble that almost resembles the contact call of a humpback whale. But the strange high frequency component at the end sounds eerily synthetic. The bio twang is just one of several deep sea sounds that had been unidentified until now. It's important to note that these sounds are not man-made. Their acoustic signature is clearly natural and in many cases organic. Here is another previously unidentified deep sea sound called the bio duck. First recorded by submarine personnel in 1960, the bio duck was once considered the largest unresolved mystery of the Southern Ocean. Perhaps the most famous unidentified deep sea sound was recorded in 1997 by researchers listening for underwater volcanic activity. This sound was unlike anything ever heard before. A researcher at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association believed the sound profile resembled a living creature with one crucial difference. It was way too loud so loud that it was picked up by underwater microphones across the Pacific more than 3,000 miles apart, making it one of the loudest sounds ever recorded, far more powerful than the calls made by any animal on Earth. I'm KP, a marine biologist who specializes in marine mammals like dolphins and whales who are heavily dependent on hearing to feed and communicate. Marine mammals rely on sound in ways land mammals simply do not, and that's because of how much the water limits their other senses. Particles in the ocean scatter light and significantly limit sight. Because of this, most aquatic animals are incredibly nearsighted and red-green colorblind, if not entirely colorblind. Unlike sharks, who have an incredible sense of smell, smell is mostly non-existent underwater for most mammals because we have to breathe air in order to smell. Think about it. Can you smell underwater? Of course not. Neither can dolphins. And anyway, sharks' sense of smell, it's not really smell, it just happens to be perceived through the, anyway, that's another video, maybe. These sensory limitations only get worse the deeper that you dive. Most sunlight is absorbed in just a few meters, significantly diminishing by the time you reach a depth of 200 meters. Beyond that, visibility is essentially zero. Now the opposite is true for sound. The speed of sound is roughly four times faster in water than in air at sea level. This increases the deeper that you dive into the ocean thanks to the increasing pressure. At the same time, temperatures decrease with the depth which slows sound down. This creates a sound channel where sound can travel long distances at a relatively constant speed. Some marine mammals, fin whales in particular, appear to use this sound channel to communicate with other members of their species from several kilometers away. Humans use this deep sea sound channel as well, specifically the US Navy, who developed an underwater sound surveillance system to track Soviet submarines during the Cold War. This system was further augmented by NOAA's Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array, a system of underwater microphones that now monitors marine mammal populations and migrations. It was these systems, as well as autonomous underwater gliders and even submarines, that first detected the unidentified sounds like the bio twang. As I mentioned, the bio twang was originally recorded in 2014 near the Mariana Trench. At first, researchers couldn't identify its source, but they believed it was a marine mammal. Which might be surprising because the last section of the bio twang really does sound synthetic. Many researchers compared it to something from Star Wars or the sound effect from the original Star Trek Enterprise ship. But there are other marine mammals who produce similar eerie, almost alien-like vocalizations. Just listen to the Weddell seal. Weddell seals are wild. However, Weddell seals are an Antarctic species and not native to the waters around the Mariana Trench, so researchers believed it was some sort of baleen whale. 
But confirming what specific species of whale was producing the bio twang is a lot harder than it sounds. It requires a person on the boat to see and identify the source at exactly the same time that the sound is heard. Eventually, NOAA researchers came across a lesser known species called Brutus whale. I know, despite the spelling, Brutus whale. On nine of the occasions when Brutus whales turned up, the researchers also heard the bio twang. Once, it's a coincidence. Twice, maybe happenstance. Nine times, it's definitely Brutus whale. Brutus whales are extremely rare, and their name is incredibly hard to pronounce. <laughs> Not phonetic. Their vast range spans most of the ocean, making them challenging to study. So once the biotwine was identified as Brutus whale, the researchers went to the audio library from NOAA's Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array to see where else the biotwang has been recorded in order to learn more about their population, distribution, and migration. The problem is NOAA has over 200,000 hours of such recordings, way too much to analyze manually. So the researchers turned to Google to see if their AI tools could help. Google agreed, and their AI allowed researchers to map where these elusive whales were found during different seasons and years, opening up new avenues of research with exciting implications for conservation. If you want to learn more about these studies, just head down to the descriptions where I cite all my sources, or right up here for my last video on how researchers are using AI to analyze whale vocalizations. We have found a, a, a combination of a whistle and a burst pulse sound that we believe is a giggle, you know? So that's the bio twang. What about the bio duck? Oh. For decades, the bio duck was recorded in the Southern Ocean, but the animal producing it was a complete mystery. Whatever it is, sounds horrible. The enigma surrounding the sound was further deepened by its discordant seasonal occurrence patterns. The bio duck can be heard year round in the Antarctic. In the winter and spring, it occurs simultaneously in the eastern Weddell Sea and off Western Australia. This indicates that the animal either has an extremely widespread distribution or potentially a year round presence in Antarctic waters by one segment of the population and a seasonal migration pattern by another. One animal that matches this distribution and migration pattern is the Antarctic minke whale. They are also one of the smallest baleen whales in the world, and because of that, were largely ignored by commercial whaling until recently, and were able to maintain a large population in the 21st century. In February of 2013, two Antarctic minke whales were tagged with multi-sensor suction cup tags that recorded temperature, pressure, acceleration, and sound. The two whales were traveling in a group of other minke whales, one tag recorded for 18 hours, the other for eight hours. During this time, no other marine mammal species was observed within one kilometer of the tagged whales. 32 vocalizations were recorded. Six of these calls resembled the bio duck. The research team concluded that the source of the sound could only have been the tagged whale itself or one of the other Antarctic minke whales traveling in the pod. It was previously hypothesized that the calls were for navigating areas of dense sea ice, but this has been disproven as the bio duck has also been detected in areas like off the coast of Namibia where there is no sea ice. A 2017 paper suggests the call could be connected to feeding because the vocal frequency matches the vertical migration of the main diet of minke whale, krill. However, other research papers refute this and instead suggest it could be related to mating. Research is ongoing, but as of today, the function of these vocals is currently unknown. Now let's turn to the most famous deep sea sound, an ultra low frequency, high amplitude underwater sound detected by NOAA's hydrophone array. Early speculation was that the sound originated from a marine mammal, like a whale except it was way too loud. Several times louder than the loudest recorded animal, the blue whale. Because of that, it has been featured in documentaries, podcasts, novels, YouTube videos, and it's usually depicted looking like this. Oh my God. See? The image is obviously silly, almost as silly as its name, the bloop. Bloop. Very fun to say. Sounds like a bath fart. 
That's what they should have. I should have been in charge of naming these. The bloop is actually so deep and low frequency that humans have a difficult time even hearing it, so it is typically sped up. There are others, similar deep sea sounds, including slow down. These are getting creepier. I like it. We should have done this as a spooky one around Halloween. Julia, particularly creepy. That one's creepy. Actually, I don't even know that it would be creepy if they hadn't named it Julia. In 2008, NASA was tracking iceberg A53A as it disintegrated near South Georgia Island. This was a very large iceberg. I'm not talking large like the one that sunk the Titanic. A53A was 50 by 22 kilometers, roughly seven times the size of Manhattan Island. As it broke up underwater, hydrophones recorded several powerfully large sounds with an acoustic signature similar to the bloop. Turns out most of these powerful underwater sounds like the bloop are cryosisms, also known as ice quakes, which are caused by the fracturing and movement of large ice masses, resulting in powerful low frequency sounds that can be heard across the entire Pacific Ocean. This discovery enabled researchers to establish the origin of other previously unidentified sounds. Julia, train, and the slowdown are most likely massive icebergs that ran aground as their spectrograms closely resemble the vibrations caused by the friction of ice sheets grinding over land. Personally, I think correctly identifying these sounds is fascinating and incredibly important. It allows us to track the previously unknown migration of Brutus' whale, study how noise pollution impacts the feeding and reproductive behavior of minke whales, and of course, help us study and monitor glacial calving and ice fracturing in the Antarctic region, which is becoming increasingly important in the face of anthropogenic climate change. Go ahead, find the angry corner of YouTube. I know it's not as much fun as the idea of aliens or some enormous previously undiscovered monster lurking in the deep sea, and I also know just based on the comment section of my video on Megalodon that some of you will simply choose to believe the science is wrong and that there is some unknown creature out there producing these sounds. The good news for those of you who want to believe is that there are some sounds that are still unidentified, specifically the upsweep and the whistle. Have a listen and tell me what you think they are in the comments below. Upsweep. Oh, it's at 20 times the original speed. The whistle. Feels like they could have cut out the part that doesn't have whistling in it. <laughs> Who's their editor?